Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball After Dark. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow coming to you at an unreasonably late hour following the Dallas Mavericks <laughs> defeat of the Denver Nuggets. It's just before midnight, and they escaped, held off, defeating the Nuggets 116-115. to 115. How you doing, Josh? Good. Uh, it's good to talk to you again. We, we kind of did a little extended absence there with you taking uh, your work trip. So yeah, how did good you to hear- talk to yourself? But you talked to yourself for 23 straight minutes last night. Like, that's impressive. You, you oh, t- I know. I was... <laughs> You, did you actually listen to it? I, I listened to about it? half, but I'm really behind on my shows because I normally listen during the day. I was in an eight-hour planning meeting, so I didn't really get to do anything. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the Mavericks are winning. That makes it easier to talk it about. It does. Them, so. Did Did you see that fun little stat that I tweeted out? Uh, I did not. Is it the Tim Hardaway stat? No, it's, well, you should do that one. I'm into, So these past three wins, the Mavericks are plus 75 from three. Oh, yeah. They have hit 25 more threes than their opponents in these in these wins. And I don't mean to like make it that simple, but that's that's really that's that's the difference. That's you know, you outshoot your opponent from three in the NBA, you're gonna win. Uh this game had no business being this close because the Mavericks were up by 10 with like three minutes left, and they pulled they pulled Christian Wood and then the offense got stupid. It's really no other way to, to phrase it. Like very Luca ISO heavy, but they held on and they won. And Dorian hit a huge three after the Nuggets went up. And you know this was this was kind of an ugly Luca game. The Nuggets have a lot of kind of rangy guys to defend Luca. Um, Tim just Tim Hardaway continues his like incandescent stretch. Why don't you Why don't you share share that cool tweet from the from the broadcast? Or I'm sorry, cool stat from the broadcast. Yeah, so he's gone five straight games with at least five made three pointers, and apparently he's only the tenth player in modern, you know, NBA history to do that. I can't remember what their cutoff was, but it sounded like they well, said I mean, it. three point three point line. Yeah, <laughs> so, not that not as long as anybody would think it is because the NBA didn't put that in until until you know it's fifty seventy five year old league, but you know I can't remember when they put the three point line in, but it's not been that long. But this, it's a, that's an impressive stat. That's pretty crazy, especially with what what's been going on the last ten years with three point shooting. Like, mm. How is he only the tenth guy to do that? Like, there there has been some tremendous three point shooting numbers over the last ten years. So I, that's that's been. I do wonder how many guys on that list are maybe maybe that list is full with a lot of recent guys. I don't know. But that's crazy. Um, well, Tim also really got to the line tonight. 29 points, shot 12 free throws, clanked the two clutch time ones, which I'm really glad they escaped with this win because, honestly, I would have hated to talk about that because I've watched Tim Hardaway. I've been present at multiple Tim Hardaway games where he misses clutch time free throws. 
<laughs> oh like, yeah, that was, yeah, that's been a thing for him. What's but, funny though is the second missed free throw, it actually kind of won them the game. It did. Well, if he so, made it, uh, that would have given that, them a chance. Before yeah. that, the team was twenty-seven of twenty-nine from th- from from uh, the free throw line, which is incredible. So it's you know this was this was a big like to me just understanding like maybe not performance wise but stakes of the game relative to where they were a week ago this this has to be their biggest win of the season oh it's not i don't even think it's close i think i can't i think anyone trying to argue otherwise is is bananas i mean it is hard to win in denver period like Mm -hmm. even if both teams are if you come into denver on seven days rest like like if you play denver in your home, like your season opener, like I don't care how much rest you have, just winning in Denver is hard. Yeah, when Denver is good, I mean, even when they're not good, I mean, Denver's had a home, you know, their home, their natural home court advantage has been something they've had since the franchise existed. So, and then to win on a second out of back to back, I think you know our our uh, you know our guy is talk tweeted something earlier that like in the Jokic era, the point differential for teams playing the Nuggets on the second out of back to back in Denver is minus 6.7 like average that's crazy i did hear i did hear my my friend adam mares who does stuff for dnvr has been it's he's not complaining i mean he is complaining but he's just pointing a fact (laughs) the nba has kind of gotten rid of the dreaded road utah denver back-to-back series and that is where they were like getting a ton of their wins and that sort of thing but it's just it's it's nice to see because I think all of us and and Jeff Skinway tweeted something to the effect of this, where it's like th- this winning two in a row is great because the next two were going to be real hard, and I did not expect a win, and that makes this just a lot easier to to you know it's it's a lot more fun talking about a game like this because let's be let's face facts the Nuggets are a good basketball team, and oh, yeah. like the, you know just a little bit deeper like. I think the Mavericks are a good matchup for them, but they're a good basketball team. Yeah, Aaron Gordon might be one of the best Luka defenders in the league, though he didn't actually spend that much time on Luka from what I could see. They really did, used a lot of um, Contavious Caldwell Pope. And that's just like, they're again, like rangy defenders are about all that can bother Luka. And and it's just, it's the sort of one you walk away from and, and it's as important as frustrating as these other losses have been frustrating. So it's... Yeah. You know, it's just, just uh, I, I'm exhausted, but I'm I'm happy to be talking about a, a fun win. Yeah, and you look at you know, and it and it kind of further validates the previous three wins because you know they get off the Schneid, uh, beating Golden State, and that really crazy game where me and you both said this win doesn't really solve anything, but it's just nice to get the monkey off their back, like it's nice to end the losing streak. Um, and then they, of course, followed it up by continuing to do all the stuff that, that that's been annoying us with the team and lose to Detroit. Uh, and so we were still, you know, after that Detroit game, you know, we were still kind of like, okay, what's what's going on here? Like, when is there going to be a when's the switch going to flip? If if it's going to flip this season, like it has the previous two, and then you know they just kind of mollywop New York and Phoenix uh, in two straight games, and it's like, okay, is this just? Uh, in decent, like just incredible three point shooting. Like they made um, 44 three pointers combined in those two games. Uh, and it's like, okay, was it just, did they just get hot? Or like, is this team the team that we thought they were in the preseason uh, or, you know, over the summer? And this is the kind of win that's like, okay, yeah, I think they're, you know, I don't know if they are officially back, but this is as close it's, as it's I think your we chart. Can, they're we either can call hitting it. shots or they're not. And, they still have a ways to go because Reggie Bullock is just like, just he's flat out has the yips. You know, Josh Green played a, he didn't ha- he didn't have an incandescent shooting performance. You know, it's like they they still have things into, that like, can go their way. Yeah, but the fact that they were able to win with Josh Green playing like, you know, nor like a not a great game with Bullock still being invisible with Luca. I mean, Luca had one of the weirdest like good bad games i've seen from him in a long time yeah he, like, yeah he played awful in the clutch uh, yeah, i'm really glad he made that pass to dorian for the for what became basically the game winning three yeah if luca and green play the way they played like if this game happened like three weeks ago they probably lose by like 30 right mm-hmm. like like this is i think this goes to show that maybe they have 
turned a corner and maybe it really was just as easy as, Hey, put Tim in the starting lineup. Cause I, that's apparently the only way for him to be good in Dallas. Well, it's, it's um, kind of hard to contextualize how bad he was because he was so I, bad. I gave up on him more or less before the Detroit game because he had a 60 game stretch. So basically from when Carlisle was let go to when he started hitting shots, cause he hit shots in the Detroit, Detroit game yep. where he was 32% from three for 60 games. Like that's a long enough sample size to say, okay. Cause I mean, it's talk was talk- right. It's talk was talking about that too. And I, 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 you know, it's like, and of course, cause it's of course the game where I give up on him is the game where he, <laughs> he starts to, to come back, which delightful. I mean, he, he, at that point in time was looking like one of the worst contracts in the league, you know, maybe not, it, he's even with the declining salary it was just he was so awful and I'm, I'm just i don't know i'm i'm happy to see him him winning i i'm curious as to what you know we always joke about this because it's like oh we it feels like with the mavericks when it comes to what they can do to improve their roster they really just might move stuff around because it's just you know you only you kind of create problems if you trade any of their core players despite the fact that all of us sort of want them to mix things up and it feels like that obviously Tim is so important to them winning these games, but Tim is also not going to shoot 53% from three, which is what he's, I think that's what he's doing over these last five games. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying these, but it's, it's certainly a, a peculiar um, path forward because it, I, I have no idea if it's sustainable. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, but it kind of look, you know, it kind of looks like what, you know, you talk about is it sustainable? Well, the, the the way it's sustainable is okay when Tim cools off. You know, Reggie actually starts making shots again. You know, they they need to balance each other out that way. So you know, I mean, you know, Dinwiddie didn't really do anything. You know, he didn't make a bunch of threes. He only took three, two threes, and a big part of his early season has been threes. So like, this was you know, I know that the Tim shooting is crazy, but like, there's enough kind of counterbalance the other way to make me think. Okay, well, if Tim cools off. You know, Bullock, if Bullock can come back when Tim cools off a little bit, like it'll, maybe they can balance each other out a little bit like that. Yeah. Um. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. So yeah, I mean that's I mean that's the way I think about it. But uh, I mean it's crazy. They are they are killing teams these last couple of games by just having like, like Tim and Josh mm-hmm. and Dorian set screens. Dorian had a great game. Dorian, Dorian had, had a great yeah. game. Fouled out of the game, which is not something I realized till just now. But we Dorian hitting five of ten from three and just being a little more dynamic is just so important to them. You know, I, I I've been kind of having conversations with people because. I did this on the green on the Spotify live last night where it's it's like you got to have somebody like somebody step up every game. And with Josh Green doing it last night, Dorian doing tonight, it makes this a little more it makes it feel a little more real to me. Um, Christian Wood had a pretty good game, had some nice passes. It, it's it, Maxi actually was kind of the one that surprised me when I was watching the game. He was just shooting with confidence. It's. <sighs> I, you can just see the image of what this team thinks they can be, but it's also like, my goodness, we have seen this, and what is the limit to it? And it's just so evident, or it's so reliant on just op- like open players making their shots. And I know that's... <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, and that's fine. That's fine. It is what it is. I mean, them winning an ugly Luka game probably yeah. feels as important as anything. Because, I mean, he really tried hard to lose them the game. I was, I'm in a, <laughs> I'm in a, I'm in a group chat. I'm in a group chat with uh, a couple of like like national guys and, and Andrew Sharp, former uh, Sports Illustrated writer and current podcaster on the Goat podcast with with Ben Golliver. He's never been a Luca guy; just doesn't like his game. And and this was that fourth quarter stretch for those four minutes is just perfect. It's like he took two awful fadeaways and turned the ball over twice. It's like that's where I'm I'm kind of misunderstanding elements of what the Mavericks were doing because it's just like run some offense don't try to like the prevent offense drives me crazy 
go score the basket. Now, when Luca passes the ball to somebody, they immediately pass it right back. Like that, that was what one of the first turnover was, where it's like Luca passed it, someone, someone passed it right back, and then Contavious Cowell Pope stripped him. It just, ugh, I don't know. I, I, you don't want to be too hard on, on, on Luca's 50 second triple double of his career, but it's just little, little ugly. But the flip side of that is, like I said, they won the ugly Luca game. Yeah, this it's really funny. Luca was the only one I felt like that I looked noticeably like tired or dealing with the Denver altitude. Like he just never looked right, uh, at least scoring wise. I mean, he was pretty good on his threes, but there were like I was watching possessions. Like he just was. There were some defensive possessions from him. Like if you want to go back, like if you have this game DVR or you want to try to find clips, like just watch only Luca on the defensive end. There were some possessions where he just kind of did the Monte Ellis. I'm just done. I'm, mm-hmm. I've defended as much as I'm going to defend this possession. And he just kind of walked, like literally just walked around, um, and kind of yeah. toward around the paint. And the funny part is Denver didn't really capitalize on it that much. Like I remember he did it once and they missed Kate Cape CP standing with, you know, 30 feet of space in the corner. Uh, and then they did it. Luca did it again. And then I think KCP got the shot in the corner and he missed it. Uh, in the fourth quarter so yeah like luca was very like his threes were good he made his free throws which was really nice considering you know when he's tired that's probably one of the parts of his game that goes first Mm -hmm. um he did make some good passes five turns some of his turnovers were bad but he did have 12 assists because guys actually made some shots but yeah the clutch the last three minutes he was his his offense was just like he just wasn't there he wasn't getting by anyone uh he was getting the ball hot potato back to him like you said um, but I mean, at the end of the day, it worked. And of course, you know, the game winning shot is Dorian making an above the break three, which he, you know, uh, our guy, Matthew told us in Slack, he entered the game shooting 27% on above the break threes. So, yep. uh, you know, good for Dorian there. I'm making that one. Well, so here's kind of the drill. I'm tired. Um, we could continue to talk about this game, but I'm going to go record a live show and there's plenty of other shows out there. You know, we recorded two shows in a row. You guys should go back and hear them when it's kind of a pain. We do these back to backs when they win. It's off. It's always great, but it's always like, there's just a ton of content crammed in. We got a lot of stuff coming tomorrow, like two or three really good columns. Um, there's a column from our, from our guy, Logan about Jalen Brunson, which will feel a little out of place in relation to the three point win streak, but that it is still quite accurate um there's an, a you know and we have a couple other ones that i'm looking forward to but you know we'll, we'll be we'll be back with more things hopefully we'll maybe try to squeeze a little more content out of this game but i'm, I'm gonna be interested to see what what anybody what anybody else wants to do so the mass pr team i want to end on this because we we're kind of curious who the other players were that did the you know five plus games of uh, five plus three pointers um gary Trent jr jason tatum dennis scott george mcleod who was a Maverick at the time, Damian Lillard, Tim Hardaway Jr., Jalen Green, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> but that dude shoots a ton of threes. So it's not that it's not that surprising. Paul George has done it twice. James Harden has done it four times. Steph Curry has done it seven times. So in the context of that, that that actually that that's a pretty good list to join, I think. That is pretty good. And that does like, you know, I was wondering how is it only 10? And of course, like six of the 10 are guys in, you know that have played in the last 10 years so right uh if that makes right. sense <laughs> love it all right so this is fun um thanks for you know hanging out with It'll, us tonight it's late it's thanks gonna be a fun live up. room i bet oh, yeah, i hope so yeah and we'll be back you know we gotta we gotta a, a, in terms of just kind of what's coming up you know there's a big bucks game friday and that is another nationally televised game on espn it's another late start but at least it's it's um you know it's on espn so it'll be fun that's a home game which is interesting enough and then the they play saturday against the bulls so we'll have a you know pair back backs but you know well december was always going to be a grind they play 17 times in 31 days so that's where it's just like winning these ones where they can it's pretty important because after like they just don't really get a lot of breaks. They go Milwaukee, Chicago, Oklahoma City, uh, Cleveland, Portland, Cleveland, Minnesota, Minnesota, Houston, and then the Lakers for Christmas. That's tough. That's a lot of games, too. Oh, well. All right, Kirk Henderson and Josh Bowe, thank you so much for hanging out, and we will talk to you guys on Friday.